We have the <laughs> Oregon State Beavers at the San Jose State Spartans. No, that is not backwards. Uh, Oregon State is paying a visit San Jose State and the recently rebuilt stadium. You're going to be seeing a new look. I believe it's CEFCU Stadium uh, there in San Jose instead of the big grass hill or the uh, – the big construction site, you now have stands and a new uh, building there. Oregon State, a 16.5 point favorite with an over-under of 55.5 points. This game kicks off at 3.30 p.m. on CBS. Uh, another weird kick time for these West Coast games. I keep expecting them to be 9.30, 10 o'clock, uh, but not 3.30 p.m. Eastern on CBS, 12.30 p.m. local. You, you just keep it right on CBS. You roll straight from yeah. the Northwestern Great. Rutgers game into Oregon State. Santa. Don't even change the channel. Just leave no. it on CBS. You get both these back-to-back. <laughs> Great. I actually do have two plays on this game. I played Oregon State minus 16.5 this summer. Uh, it hasn't moved. I do like to see closing line value. Haven't seen it, but that's okay. I, I do like uh, do like my play there still. Would still play it again at 16.5. And, and also 53.5. That's now up to 55.5. Oregon State was really, really good at avoiding third down last year. And now they had a quarterback who is probably better than Ben Gobranson. Um, I do buy into DJU this year. I still think he's a good quarterback that didn't just forget how to play football. Um, Chevin Cordero looked really, really good last week against USC. I don't know if that's necessarily a accolade to Cordero himself. I mean, he looks like a good player, or if USC's defense might just still really be that bad. He had a trio of passing touchdowns and 52 rush yards to go with it. Top target, Justin Lockhart, did not play in Week 0. I don't know if he's going to play this week. San Jose State is one of the most difficult teams to find injury information in, and the university like came out themselves and said, we are not going to tell you who is and is not going to play. So that makes it even more difficult. Uh, it didn't really make a difference. San Jose State's offense still looked pretty good. They actually had a 100% success rate in the fourth quarter. It was a blowout at that time, but still, 100% success rate, pretty good. And then their first half explosiveness was really encouraging as well. Uh, I figured defense was going to be an issue for the Spartans, and it was. You know, I, I can't remove this result completely, but it was against a Heisman winner with probably a top five cast of weapons in the country. I do like Oregon State this year. They return all five offense linemen, which should be one of the best units nationally. Phil Steele ranks them number 12. Oregon State, for me, Brett, is a sleeper pick um, in the Pac-12. They are for a lot of people uh, to to make a run at that Pac-12 championship game. I have the Beavers power rated as the fifth best team in the conference, um, but they have the easiest schedule of any Pac-12 team. They miss USC, they miss Washington, and conference play two of the better teams in the conference. So I actually have an 18% chance for Oregon State to make it to Las Vegas. I'm excited to see them for the first time in this game against a team that's just played one of their conference foes. It's interesting, right? San Jose State plays USC this year. You, Oregon State does not, and Oregon State's in USC's conference. So that's just an interesting little <laughs> quirk right there, and we'll get a kind of a baseline for what these two teams are since they have this common opponent in San Jose State and they don't play each other. I have Oregon State in this one minus 14. It's an 84% win expectancy. Beavers power rated number 24 nationally, like I said, number five in the Pac-12. San Jose State is number 93. So for me, Brett, this is a mismatch on both sides of the balls of of pretty significant uh, proportions. Oregon State's number 35 projected offense will have the advantage, I think, against San Jose State's number 93 defense. And the Beavers have an even bigger advantage when their projected number 26 defense is on the field with the Spartans' number 91 offense plus this game, um, excuse me, this game is, though, at San Jose State, as you mentioned. So that could, you know, be somewhat of a uh, of an equalizer here. But I don't expect that San Jose State f- fan base to be too rowdy. I don't think it's going to be too much of a problem for uh, Oregon State. I am curious to see DJU in his first time uh, playing for the Beavers. So to make matters worse for San Jose State, they're coming off, as you mentioned, that 28-56 defeat at USC in Week 0. Oregon State hasn't played a game yet this fall, so from a scheduling perspective, you could argue better for Oregon State being fresh. Um, to be fair to the Spartans, though, their performance against USC last week was almost exactly what my model expected. Uh, their k Ford rating fell from minus 6.3 to minus 6.5, so that's not a huge drop after losing a game by you know 28 points. They maintained their number 93 ranking in the power rating set. Bottom line, Oregon State, minus 14, on the road, with an 84% win expectancy for the Beavers. I do have, I think, 
I don't know if I'm higher on Oregon State or lower on San Jose State than you are. P- looking at the numbers, it kind of looks like I'm higher on Oregon State potentially. I make this 16 and a half uh, with my aggregated power ratings. And the reason I lean to lean uh, to to lay the 16 and a half is because I think Oregon State will be able to line the football up and run it kind of at will. Uh, their back is is dynamic. He's a true sophomore this year, uh, and again, running behind that offensive line, and then again, you, you bring in a, a former five star quarterback, a blue chipper that I still maintain think you know could be a pretty good quarterback in the right system. And we talked about it in the preseason that. DJU chose Corvallis because of the system. So I think he has an opportunity to thrive there. And I, I just like the trend that Oregon State's offense is in. I'm not 100% sure that the power ratings have a full grasp on how good this team could be. So maybe this is a little bit of a ceiling play rather than an average expected outcome play. Uh, but sometimes as a, as, a, as a better in college football, you just have to have to do that. <laughs> 